shall we? Game six in San Antonio tonight. The Spurs have the opportunity to close it out, but will they? The Clippers seem to be playing extremely aggressive. They do not want to lose this fight. And Skip talks about his Spurs, and you seem to say that you don't think that they will be able to close it out. So I'm not going to talk to you because okay. you're a bit emotional yeah. about I'm your not Spurs. Objective. Not at all. So it's 3-2. Can the Spurs close it out, Stephen A? Yes, they can. Yes, they can, and I believe they will. Um, I'm not, don't clap. I'm not happy about it. We all know I'd rather be in L.A. than a river walk. I'm what? not going to apologize. <laughs> uh, but but the, the fact of the matter is the Clippers don't have a reliable bench. One day Austin Rivers shows up, the next day he doesn't. One day Jamal Crawford shows up, the next day he doesn't. Never do any of them show up with the exception of game four when both Austin Rivers and Jamal Crawford showed up. Uh, along with Big Baby, to some degree, contributed 19 minutes off the bench that particular day. You have to have not just discipline, not just smarts. You have to have depth when you're going to take on the San Antonio Spurs. And the Clippers are devoid of any. And I think that Chris Paul has been asked to do entirely too much. And it's just too much for him to overcome. Blake Griffin, one of nine in the fourth quarter, missing both free throws. I mean, we know he's a star, but my God, you've got to know how to close. And that's not the case. DeAndre Jordan is an absolute catastrophe on the free throw line. And you you still tied the game, the series up at 2-2 winning Sunday. And then you turn around less than 48 hours later with a chance to put your collective hand around their throat and to win in L.A. And you blow that opportunity because of mental mistakes to tip in by DeAndre Jordan, uh, the, the, the lack of efficiency on the part of Blake Griffin, the, the absence of a bench. Austin Rivers just had two points. That gave him four points that game. Jamal Crawford, 0 of 6 from three-point range, 1 of 7 overall shooting. They're going to have to put forth the Herculean effort to stave off San Antonio ending this series because you already beat them once on their home court. I don't know if the reigning defending world champions are going to let you do it twice. Do I believe the Clippers can do it? Sure, they can do it because they've got a lot of offensive firepower. They're pretty difficult to stop. All of that is true. But if I had to bet my money, right. I'm going to bet my money on a 39-year-old guy that's recognized as the greatest power forward in history, uh, a coach who is considered the very best in this game and one of the best ever, and a bunch of supplementary parts who manage to continuously have luck on their side when it counts because they play within themselves, because they're disciplined, because they're not concerned with anything but the bottom line. All of those ingredients matter in closeout games. The San Antonio Spurs know how to win. The Clippers are still trying to find out how to learn how to win. Mm. Too much to overcome. They should have never been able to go against each other in the first round because of the bogus seedings yeah. on the part of the NBA. It's but it morning. is what it is. The Spurs close the deal tonight. You picked it in six, and I sure hope, with all my heart and soul, you are for once right for about once? Spurs in six. <laughs> I'm I, usually I wrong about the Spurs, I though. Know, right I about know, that. I'm usually wrong about the Spurs. Go on. I'm an objective Spurs fan. I said Spurs in seven, but now I'm backed into the corner of, could they go back to Staples and win for a third time in one series at Staples on the road? Are you kidding me? No way. I don't love what I have seen so far from my Spurs. And speaking of hands around throat and closing deals, what happened last Sunday in Game 4 when I thought my Spurs were ready to go like this to the Clippers? What happened? Chris Paul went for 34. Austin Rivers came off the bench and made 7 out of 8 shots. And Blake Griffin went for 20 points and 19 rebounds. And my Spurs got blown off their home floor. So how can I trust completely a team whose igniter, whose point guard, Tony Parker, is is dragging around a bad Achilles tendon. He has no lift on his jump shot. He is 0 for 8 in this series from the three-point line. Danny Green, my designated shooter, who has the finals record for NBA for a three-point shooting, 
is 8 for 28 from the three-point line in this series. That's 29%. Boris Diaw from the three-point line is 1 for 11 in this series. Tiago Splitter should not even be on the floor because he's got a bad calf. He shouldn't be playing right now, and he drags it around for 15 minutes a game, and it actually hurts more than he helps. So how can I trust this? My 39-year-old center, who is all-time, all-time, big-time great, just played 39 minutes two nights ago. Is he going to come back and play 40 tonight? I don't know. That's a lot to ask of a 39-year-old. All salient points, all right on the money, mm -hmm. all factually correct 1,000%. Mm -hmm. And they're still up 3-2. Yep. Yeah. But, but were they not lucky to win a couple of games at Staples? Well, I don't want to say lucky. Yeah. I don't want to say lucky. You they know why? Because out. guess what happens? Luck is when, yeah. you know, I, I mean, they were in the game. Yeah. They were in position to win. They should, I mean, game one, they got blown out of the Staples Center. I mean, they got ramrod. In game four, okay. they got blown off the whole floor. floor. And, yeah, and then they came back in one game, too. Mm -hmm. And they came back in one game, too. Now, they, they, the, the Spurs do seem allergic to prosperity from time mm -hmm. to time. There's no doubt about yeah. that. But the Clippers don't seem to know what prosperity is because they exactly. can't get to that point. I got exactly. one thing on my side. As much as I love Doc Rivers, I did not love what he did after that game the okay. other night when he right away voluntarily went after the referees. When you reach for that at this point after five games sure. of the series, it's a little desperate to me. And he got 25000 fine for it, as he should have. But it comes across as sour grape excuses that that I don't think his team needs to hear at this point. Well, maybe, you know, listen, desperate time calls for desperate measures. And the fact of the matter is, is that you got a guy like DeAndre Jordan uh, that looked like he should have grabbed some Prozac or something because he looked so depressed after the game. Uh, you know, it's just the truth. Yeah. That's, how, that, that's how pitiful yeah. he looked. DeAndre Jordan is a guy that I'm very fond of. I think he's a big-time talent. I think he's a Skywalker. I really like him. But there is simply no excuse for the ineptitude at the free throw line that he has exhibited. He is an Achilles heel for this team. Spencer Hawes, remember, preseason pick, I picked the Clippers to go to the finals because the acquisition of Spencer Hawes was supposed to be a big man that they could put in in the fourth quarter when DeAndre Jordan wasn't there, mm -hmm. who had a perimeter shot, who could pull big boys away from the basket, thereby giving Chris Paul room to operate. Spencer Hawes has been an unmitigated disaster, and he wants to blame it on the fact that he's coming off the bench instead of starting. You're a professional. Figure it out. You're getting paid. You ain't playing I, for I, I free. I bet you he will play some too. Well, he needs to yeah, play some, but the point is that he acts like the only way he can be effective is if he started. When Blake Griffin was out those 15 games, he raved about how well he played thereafter because he was in a starter lineup. Well, damn it, you knew with DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin, you weren't going to be a yep. starter when you signed as a free agent to go to the Clippers. So it's ridiculous for him to make that excuse now. Last quick point. The other night, Jeez. the other night in the fourth quarter, the Spurs resorted to Tim Duncan covering Blake Griffin. Yeah. And you know what? It worked. Can he do it again? Could he do it for three or four quarters tonight? As long as he can keep. Blake we'll Griffin find out, out. inside. Game yeah. six tonight. Key to the game. Do the Clippers have that mentality to win? And can the Spurs figure it out? We'll talk about it tomorrow right here on the show. Uh, we actually have a, a guest of honor at our pick board. Dan Rayfall, our ESPN boxing analyst, is here. Dan, who wins? Make your pick. Dan so says Floyd Mayweather will so win brilliant. the fight. He's so brilliant. Stephen A. says you're brilliant. Join the desk with your brilliance. We'll be right back in just a few moments. First take on the road in Vegas. What happened last Sunday in Game 4 when I thought my Spurs were ready to go like this to the Clippers? What happened? Chris Paul went for 34. Austin Rivers came off the bench and made 7 out of 8 shots. And Blake Griffin went for 20 points and 19 rebounds. And my Spurs got blown off their home floor. So how can I trust completely a team whose igniter, whose point guard, Tony Parker, is dragging around a bad Achilles tendon? He has no lift on his jump shot. He is 0 for 8 in this series from the 3 point line. Danny Green, my designated shooter who has the finals record for NBA for uh, three-point shooting, is 8 for 28 from the three-point line in this series. That's 29%. Boris Diaw from the three-point line is 1 for 11 in this series. Tiago Splitter should not even be on the floor because he's got a bad calf. He shouldn't be playing right now and he drags it around for 15 minutes a game and it actually hurts more than he helps. So how can I trust this? My 39-year-old center, who is all-time, all-time, big-time great, just played 39 minutes two nights ago. Is he going to come back and play 40 tonight? I don't know. That's a lot to ask of a 39 year old all salient points all right on the money mm -hmm. all factually correct 1000 mm -hmm. percent 
and they're still up 3-2. Yep. Yeah. But, but were they not lucky to win a couple of games at Staples? Well, I don't want to say lucky. I, know. I don't want to say lucky. You they know why? Because out. guess what happens? Luck is when, yeah. you know, I, I mean, they were in the game. Yeah. They will. Um, I'm not, don't clap. I'm not happy about it. We all know I'd rather be in L.A. than a river walk. I'm what? not going to apologize. <laughs> uh, but but the, the fact of the matter is the Clippers don't have a reliable bench. One day... Austin Rivers shows up, the next day he doesn't. One day Jamal Crawford shows up, the next day he doesn't. Never do any of them show up, with the exception of Game 4, when both Austin Rivers and Jamal Crawford showed up. Uh, along with Big Baby, to some degree, contributed 19 minutes off the bench that particular day. You have to have not just discipline, not just smarts. You have to have depth when you're going to take on the San Antonio Spurs and the Clippers are devoid of any. And I think that Chris Paul has been asked to do entirely too much. And it's just too much for him to overcome. Blake Griffin, one of nine in the fourth quarter, missing both free throws. I mean, we know he's a star, but my God, you've got to know how to close. And that's not the case. DeAndre Jordan is an absolute catastrophe on the free throw line. And you, you still tied the game, the series up at 2-2 winning Sunday. And then you turn around less than 48 hours later with a chance to put your collective hand around their throat and to win in L.A. And you blow that opportunity because of mental mistakes, the tip in by DeAndre Jordan, uh, the, the, the lack of efficiency on the part of Blake Griffin, the, the absence of a bench. They should have never been able to go against each other in the first round because of the bogus seedings yeah. on the part of the NBA. It's but it morning. is what it is. The Spurs closed the deal tonight. You picked it in six, and I sure hope, with all my heart and soul, you are for once right for about once? Spurs in six. <laughs> I'm usually I, I wrong see. about the Spurs, I though. Know, right I about know, that. I'm usually wrong about the Spurs. Go on. I'm an objective Spurs fan. I said Spurs in seven, but now I'm backed into the corner of, could they go back to Staples and win for a third time in one series at Staples on the road? Are you kidding me? No way. I don't love what I have seen so far from my Spurs. And speaking of hands around throat and closing deals, what happened last Sunday in Game 4 when I thought my Spurs were ready to go like this to the Clippers? What happened? Chris Paul went for 34. Austin Rivers came off the bench and made 7 out of 8 shots. And Blake Griffin went for 20 points and 19 rebounds. And my Spurs got blown off their home floor. So how can I trust completely a team whose igniter, whose point guard, Tony Parker, is is dragging around a bad Achilles tendon. He has no lift on his jump shot. He is 0 for 8 in this series from the three-point line. Danny Green, my designated shooter, who has the finals record for NBA for uh, three-point shooting, is 8 for 28 from the three-point line in this series. That's 29%. Boris Diaw from the three-point line is 1 for 11 in this series. Tiago Splitter should not even be on the floor because he's got